What is up everybody? Welcome to take 12 of Craig trying to do this video. I'm not messing. This is take 12. I'm going to go through, give you my predictions ahead of the Crystal Palace game. The game, of course, does kick off Monday night at 8pm. It's the first of two Mondays in a row that we play. Second one, nice handy three points away at Manchester United. And I look forward to that build up later on in the week. For now, let's have a look at what we can expect from Crystal Palace. What we can hopefully expect from the Reds. And of course, I'll give you my score prediction, predicted 11s and all that stuff as well. Well, do drop a like on the video hit that subscribe button for me and if you have any thoughts on what I speak about let me know in the comment section right let's get stuck into it Crystal Palace of course started the league campaign with a 2-0 home loss to Arsenal I did watch the game Arsenal were very dominant in the first half but Crystal Palace really did pick it up in the second half and can find himself a little bit unlucky maybe not to at least have scored a goal potentially have even gotten a draw from the game and uh, the business that they've done in the summer wasn't that impressive Christian Benteke has of course departed for the MLS they brought in Czech Decore from League 1 for just over 20 million quid and I did say uh, there like I just made a random noise like I was about the fart or something but that's my attempt at pronunciation so there we go and uh, they've also brought in Richards from Bayern Munich a centre back don't know too much about him either cost them just over 10 million quid so what are we going to expect from the Reds? Well, firstly, we want a better performance because we were not at the races against Fulham. We were probably lucky to leave Craven Cottage with a point. Fulham outfought us all over the pitch. Mitrovic bullied our defence and I don't like to say that, but he kind of did. That being said, we could have still pinched the points. Jordan Henderson struck the bar late in the game and we could have left there. It would have been robbery, let's be honest, but who cares? didn't happen so we move on we do need three points in this game though i'm going to take you through my score prediction first and uh, see what you guys think about that so it is a 2-0 home victory for me that's what i'm going for in this game i'd love us to keep a clean sheet in fact i think we need to keep a clean sheet to get that confidence back up and um, with regards to team selection joe matip is unfortunately most likely ruled out of this game he pulled up in training we await absolute confirmation to the severity of that injury but it's not looking great now so probably not going to have him Bit of bonus news though, Naby Keita is back so he should be available for the game. Obviously no Thiago, uh, he's going to be out for up to six weeks according to, well, most of the media to be fair. Uh, Giada is still out obviously, we do have Costa Simicus who will start up back training. I haven't really heard anything on young Ramsey to be honest, so waiting for him. Um, and look, Jurgen Klopp has said that he expects to find our midfield solutions from within and not to dip into the market. So that being said, will we perhaps see him shake things up a little bit for this one? Well here's what I think will happen. Let's start off with the goalkeeper and the centre backs. No surprises here, really. Of course, it's got to be Joe Gomez to come in to partner Virgil van Dijk. We've got no Canade. We're very doubtful on Matip, so this is Joe's chance at redemption. The chance to put himself back into Jurgen Klopp's thinking, fresh off the back of signing a new contract. And we hope that we see a quality performance from Joe Gomez because alongside van Dijk, he has looked good at times. So, fingers crossed, he can get back to that form. Full backs. No real surprises here either. Of course, it is Trent Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side and Andy Robertson on the left-hand side. No doubt that both of these guys are going to want an improved performance from the one that they put in against Fulham. It's very rare I would ever pull up Trent and Robbo for their performances, but I did think that both of them were seriously lacking in their own quality in that game against Fulham, but they weren't the only ones. Got to be clear and point that out. We were lacking all over the pitch. I know people were... We're very critical of Trent for Mitrovic scoring that header at the back post. Look, I think that was the last stage of not defending well. Robbo should have blocked the cross from the other side. Hendo probably shouldn't have been dispossessed, albeit I still feel like he was fouled. That doesn't matter. The referee wave play on and the goal stood. So hopefully we've learned some lessons. Because I think with Crystal Palace, they're probably... I don't say they're more likely to, but if I was managing Palace, I'd probably go with Mateta up top rather than Utsun Edward purely for that reason he's bigger more physical and probably going to be a bit more handful for our defenders as well so that's what i'd do if i was patrick vieira um zaha he's always going to be a concern as well but he's also got a bit petulant in him so i'd like and i don't i do like to say this i'd like to see us wind him up a little bit i'd like to see us you know poke the bear for want of a better phrase because he does tend to react and hopefully he can pick up an early yellow card or something and then he has to watch what he does for the rest of the game i know that's the sheer house within me but we are where we are my friends now we move into the interesting area midfield this is what i think klopp would go with by the way my midfield will be slightly different but this is what i think jürgen klopp will go with Fabinho in the holding role, Naby Keita to come back in and play on the left-hand side, and Harvey Elliott on the right-hand side. 
I say this with Harvey Elliott more in hope that this is what Klopp is going to do rather than any definitive realisation that I think Klopp has come to. You know, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Jordan Henderson get the call again. He wasn't great against Fulham, was brilliant against Manchester City. You know, for me, he was man of the match in that game in the uh, Community Shield, but wasn't great until he dropped into the six when Fabinho went off. Now, is there any concerns around Fabinho's form? I know it's very early in the season, but he didn't look at it against Fulham and I hope that he's back to his best in front of a packed Anfield on Monday night Naby Keita again we, we still have to see the best of Naby Keita lots of talk about him getting the contract extension that will come in due course I'm sure but for now I'd like to see Naby Keita become that swashbuckling type midfielder that we expected when we signed him and he has that capability I think we look well balanced when he's on the left side himself or Thiago I've usually got no concerns if they're on the left but the reason I've gone with Harvey Elliott here is when he came on against Fulham, he opened up the pitch for Mohamed Salah, gave him a lot more options to get involved in the game, lovely little flicks around the corner. Um, and I look, I really like Harvey as well. He should be full of confidence having signed a new contract at the club, to, which will keep him with us till 2027. And I'm sure much beyond that as well. I feel like Harvey Elliott will be at Liverpool as long as Liverpool want to keep Harvey Elliott here because... He's a Liverpool fan, just like you and I. So that's my midfield. Love to know if you'd like to tweak that or have any suggestions. Maybe you'd like Hendo in there to start. Or maybe, well, look, here's our thinking at Anfield Agenda. And I know I speak for Chris on this as well because we spoke about it last night. I feel that as of now, having one of our two young midfielders in there is okay. Two would be a bit risky. So what do I mean by that? So I'd have no problem, say, putting Elliot on the right-hand side, Kate on the left-hand side, or... Carvalho on the left hand side but I'd want to balance that with Henderson on the right hand side in the future Carvalho Elliot brilliant but right now I think I'd like to balance and to go with the balance I think it's more suited if we go with Elliot and Keita for this one uh, up top you're not going to be surprised here it's exactly who you expect wide areas of course Lucho Diaz on the left hand side and the Egyptian king himself Mohamed Salah on the right hand side Really looking forward to Mo this season. I think he's going to form an amazing partnership with uh, Darwin to the centre. We've seen glimpses of it right at the end against Fulham. And I know I haven't announced the centre forward yet or my choice of centre forward. But it is of course Darwin Nunes. And surely we are at a point now where Jurgen Klopp has to start Darwin. I absolutely understood maybe why he wanted to go with his tried and trusted lieutenant and Bobby against Fulham. It didn't really work out and we looked a completely different team and much more of a handful when Darwin came on for the last half hour or so. So Darwin, Salah, Diaz, and I think they're going to be a great partnership as the season goes on. So that, my friends, is my predictions for this one. But as always, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. We will be doing a watch of the game on our Twitch channel. The link is in the description. We'll be doing all the big games over the weekend as well. United game tomorrow, I'll be on that one. Sunday's games, we'll be doing those as well. So make sure you go over and give that a follow. Thank you for your time as always. I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the good weather. Fingers crossed we get the three points on Monday because we, we can't be allowed Manchester City to just get further and further ahead already. So let me know your thoughts on this and anything else you want to put in the comment section. Be nice, enjoy the good weather, and I'll talk to you soon. Much love. Bye-bye.